three, two, one. Here we go. We are now recording. Uh, so yes, yeah, so welcome to uh, today's training session uh, with the Kerno Club. And uh, today we are going to be tackling the behemoth that is um, meta advertising. So Facebook advertising or meta advertising. So move my screen around here for you. Let me just share my screen as well. So here we go. Lovely. I'm hoping you can see that okay. If you could just let me know that you could see that, that'd be lovely. <laughs> Somebody could just give me a little uh, little shout out. In fact, you're not able to, are you? I'm going to assume you can because I can see it on my screen. So, oh, Joe Lyons. Yes, she put her hand up. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Okay. So, um, what are we learning today? Again, we're going to learn to launch a meta advert. Uh, at the end of it, we're going to take some action. So uh, I'm going to run through the fundamentals of, uh, of launching an ad. I'm going to break down uh, what the actual ad, uh, what an ad should look like um, and give you some helpful tips on uh, what you should be looking for when you're when you're launching that ad. So jumping straight into it. Uh, first of all, what is a meta advert? Well, first of all, Meta is the rebrand of Facebook. Uh, you may remember uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, caused a little bit, little bit of controversy because Facebook was such a well-known name. Um, he decided to rebrand the company, uh, and it kind of encompasses an Instagram uh, as well. Um, so Facebook is a, is a product of Meta, as is Instagram. So if you can imagine, Meta is the, uh, the kind of corporation lying over the top of it. Um, so again, I might refer to it as Facebook advertising at some stages. I may refer to it as Instagram advertising, but effectively a meta advert, you can run it over both platforms. So you can run the same ad across Facebook and Instagram. First little bit of knowledge there. Uh, now paid advertising, so Meta obviously is the rebrand of Facebook uh, and of course Instagram. Paid advertising allows you to utilize the data within the Meta and Instagram platforms to reach the people you most want to sell to. So there are a number of ways that they do this um, uh, and, and it can be anything down to uh, conversations you're having in Messenger. So a big thing that I hear people um, a big thing that I hear people talking about is, um, you know, oh, me and my friend were talking about, you know, I don't know, gloves the other day. And suddenly now I'm seeing tons of adverts for gloves popping up in my feed. Now, it's a bit of a contentious issue because some people say, uh, well, actually, you know, I think Facebook are listening to us for our devices. We certainly, you know, we give them a lot of permissions. But a lot of the time when I have these conversations with people, what they realize is that they were talking about gloves to somebody maybe face to face. And then perhaps they've um, um, they've sent a message saying, oh, you know, these gloves are good. Or they've maybe, you know, been onto a, a clothing website where they've been looking at gloves. Now, most um, businesses will have what we will touch upon this a little bit later. They'll have something called a pixel or a data set on their website. And when they have that on their website, um, this effectively tracks them going to the website. So that business, that particular business can remarket so they can actually target those people uh, with, with fresh ads. Um, but also it allows competitors to be able to target them as well. Because if you're selling, I'm using gloves, it's probably a really bad example. But if you're, if you're, if you're selling gloves, then you want to have that metapixel on your website, or the, uh, sorry, you want to have the pixel or the data set. If they've changed the name of it, they're changing the, the purpose of that. Again, I'll go into a bit more detail as well, but effectively, um, you, the, you know, people will have conversations about gloves as an, as an example, um, and they may message somebody, you know, some, somebody through a, a link to some gloves on a, on a website or maybe an advert that they've seen. So, I don't necessarily think Meta uh, um, or, or you know any of these big Facebook uh, companies are, are listening in to our phone calls, but certainly with Messenger being a product of Meta as well, they're certainly picking up keywords within there. Um, and with machine learning and AI as it is at the moment, it wouldn't be a difficult task to pick out specific keywords. My hands, my hands were really cold today, for example. Suddenly, Meta goes, "Hey." We know this person's had cold hands. 
let's sell them you know, let's show them gloves that they may want to buy and you can do that with any products that are out there as well so that's what a mirror advert is what are the advantages of advertising on meta well the main reason is you don't need to rely on, on an organic reach so when you're posting you're just doing a post on your page your personal page or you're posting on your business page um you you're relying on the algorithm looking after you basically you're relying on it looking after you and showing your advert to people that uh that potentially may be interested in buying now this does work to a certain extent the problem you have though is that when you're posting organically you're only ever reaching between three and five percent of your audience so if you've got a hundred followers let's say you've got a hundred followers on your Facebook page you're only reaching between three and five of those people if you've got a thousand obviously it's between 30 and 50 um, there are some exceptions to the rule and if you're putting out decent content uh, that's getting lots and lots of engagement so people are stopping and looking at the post people are liking the post people are commenting on the post people are sharing it people are clicking a, a, you know on the link uh, people are reading the comments these are all classed as engagements and the more engagements you have on a post then the more that uh, Meta or Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, whichever platform you want, the more activity that happens or engagement that happens on that post, then the more it will show it to people outside. That's how people go viral. Sorry, I keep doing that this morning, but that's how people go viral. Um, so the advantage of advertising is you don't have to rely on going viral. Uh, instead, you put in the parameters of the people that you want to reach and Meta will do the rest. It's as simple as that. So that is the advantage of advertising on Meta. The disadvantage, and I put disadvantages, there are obviously more, but this is the main one, is it will cost you money per impression for every person that sees your advert, whether they buy or not. And that is a big sticky point for a lot of people. Now, you can reach um we we've we've um obviously we've got a lot of analytics that we can look at and what we find uh, for all obviously all the adverts that we run for our clients and what we find is that for every one pound that you spend and i'm saying this very loosely but for every one pound you spend you can reach approximately 300 people so if you're spending 10 pounds per day you could be reaching 3,000 people again that's a very i'm kind of plucking that out of the air um because uh, and, and the reason i say that i should be very very clear is that the more targeted you are with uh who you're looking to reach and the more competition there is for the people that you're trying to reach will obviously drive that cost up so if you're just putting out a post uh, if you're just putting out an advert that's very very broad that's very very um you know very little targeting uh, at all then you're going to be you're probably getting you may be getting more than 300 people per pound but if you're being very very targeted you're targeting just business owners you're targeting people that um have a specific interest uh, whether it's financial services i know we've got matt watching if, if you're targeting someone that's got the, the, that's interested in financial services is perhaps interested in um you know um um like updating their pension like specific keywords like that you're targeting people of a certain age a certain demographic obviously that can increase it we've got uh rita with us as well today um again if you're targeting people that are perhaps looking for for um an event to go to and you're trying to drive people through to um uh, like an eventbrite page which again you can absolutely do then again the if you're if you're looking at a certain demographics so you're looking at people that have that disposable income to be able to go and spend that money again that's going to push the price up a little bit as well but the one pound for 300 impressions is is again a loose guide but that is one of the disadvantages now what is a meta advert made up of so it does surprise me really how many people um are not aware that they're seeing adverts so i have taken a screenshot you'll have to excuse it and i'm hoping you can see that okay 
But this is from a company called Pixel Chronicles, not affiliated with us. This is not an advert that we've created. Um, but, but effectively, when you see a, what looks like a post come up, below the business name so you can see hopefully you can see there it says pixel chronicles and then it says sponsored that is of course a sponsored ad now you'll also have ads that are in the top so if you're on a desktop now and you if you go to facebook feel free to go to facebook right now and you go to your home page in the top right hand corner you should probably see two ads up there as well these are called placements uh they'll also come up in between reels if it's a video They'll also come up, uh, or an animated video, I should say. Um, uh, they'll also come up uh, uh, in your messenger as well. So it'll be normally four or five uh, messages down. You'll see an advert there as well. Uh, and there's, there's tons of other places there as well, but these are called placements. Now, when you're running an ad, um, and I will come onto this in a little bit, a bit more detail a bit later on, when you're running an ad, um, certain placements may work for your business. I'll say that again certain placements may work better for your business so what we found for one of our clients in particular is that those ads in the top right hand corner they just don't work um they have very very little um uh sales going through those ads so what did we do we removed the placements we said do you know what that's not working for us we're we're taking it out it's gone um so so that that is that, that that would be uh, obviously um, um, a um, an example of a bad placement for that client. Now it may be that you, the placement for you that placement works. The only way you're going to know um, is by testing it, of course. So so this advert um, as it is here right now, it may be a little bit different. Uh, and, and again, different sizing. So you you need to make sure you've got different sizings of the creatives. I'll come on to that in a moment. So the creative is actually the the image itself uh, or the video um but let's let's break down what this advert is actually made up of so first thing is a caption now the caption itself can be up to uh i'm gonna get this wrong now about 1600 characters so you can have it quite long and you probably have seen ads where it will say see more and you click on it and that will that will basically bring up more text below it uh, I, what I would say for, for anyone, and I'm going to talk about this a lot today, is there's something called A-B testing or split testing. That's A-B testing or split testing. Different people call it different things. But effectively, what we do for any of clients that we work with when we're running ads for, for them is we'll have a short text as a, 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 a split test A, if you will. And then we'll have long text for what we would call like a split test B. So you've got an A and a B. And what you do is you analyze the results as you would do within any marketing, um, uh, any marketing activity that you may undertake. You would look at those results after, say, seven days, 14 days, 21 days, maybe a month, two months, however long. But you analyze the results and you work out what, what works better. What are people responding better to? Where are your inquiries or your sales coming from? Are they coming from the short text or are they coming from the long text? You'll notice as well, um, there's some emojis in here. Um, Weirdly, um, and I haven't seen a definitive answer as to why, but emojis in ads, emojis in posts tend to do better. They tend to get better engagement. Um, maybe it's a, a, a you know a psychological thing, but again, I've not read any clear uh, examples or um, um, ideas of why that may be. But that is your caption. Next up is your creative. So I mentioned this a moment ago. So your creative can be made up of a, a single image, um, which uh, which would just be an image, fairly straightforward. Um, it could also be a video. So this one that we're looking at right here now is a video. It's a 49 second video. Um, video obviously is one of the best converting forms of media. So we tend to recommend when businesses have ads, that they do actually create videos, even if it's something that's nice and simple, but it will just grab people's attention a little bit better. Um, uh, you could also have a carousel as well. Now, a carousel is a simple, um, um, uh, sounds as it is really, basically, you, you may have seen it, it's basically a number of images running across the middle, um, uh, sorry, running across the ad itself, and people can scroll through. The beauty of using a um, 
the beauty of using a carousel is that you can actually see where people have so, so if you've got a link going from that creative uh, from that carousel and you've got say different products on there people can click on those different products and you'll actually be able to see the results of what has got people to click through so if you've got go back to gloves a black pair of gloves a red pair of gloves green pair of gloves and so on and so forth and then you find out that actually you know after analyzing the results after three months that hey do you know what green gloves seem to be working better you can change the placement and put green gloves at the front naturally the the the, the image that's at the front if you will um so the first image you would see on a carousel tends to do better um so it is good again to do that what we call split testing or a b testing um but again that is the creative the call to action so bottom right hand corner you can say it's a, it says shop now there are um, a variety of different calls to action that you can choose from you can choose shop now you can choose order now you can choose learn more um dependent on the and again, I will come to this in a moment, but dependent on the um, the outcome that you're looking for. So if you're looking at um, uh, running a sales um, a sales advert or a, a lead advert or maybe a brand awareness advert, um, whatever the, the goal is that you've chosen will give you different options on what your call to action is. But again, obviously this is they're looking so using pixel chronicles here these guys are looking for people to buy this games in one retro gaming console right now they want people to go there and buy it straight away so it's very much the um bottom of the funnel if you will and then finally you've got the headline so you can see the headline uh, again over sixty thousand games in one retro gaming console um this to me is a it's a bit of a poor headline but effectively you get um the ideal amount is 40 characters what they have done here is that they've kept it all in one line you can have it going over two lines um but one line is much better personally as well i probably would have thrown an emoji in there as well but this again can be either uh, almost like a call to action so a lot of people and you probably see a lot of um adverts now with like a little finger pointing towards the whatever the call to action is so they'll use an emoji with a point with a with a finger pointing um but again this is this needs to be something that just kind of catches people and the over sixty thousand games in one retro gaming console is great um and it's you know it's a really oh, okay it's kind of shortening if you will and, and just giving people a um you know a, a bite size of this is what the product is is great but to me, there's nothing compelling about that headline. I'm being a bit, crit I'm critiquing it now as well, but um, I'd have had capitals um, on games in retro gaming console as well. Again, that's just a perhaps personal preference as well. But that is a meta advert. And again, hopefully, um, if you are quite active on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, as you're scrolling through, you'll see that little sponsored and you'll notice it. And what we do, um, industry secret i believe most agencies do this um if i see an ad that really catches my eye whether it's a product i want or not i'll always take a screenshot of it um and what i'll do is i'll look at the advert again there and go, right okay what was it that made me stop what was it that made me go oh that's interesting um and i and i, and I would encourage you to do the same what you'll find <clears throat> and what you probably will already find um is that you'll be seeing adverts from some of your competitors if you have competitors um and you'll start seeing adverts from your competitors because if you're looking at their website again the way that um meta advertising works and the way that the targeting works is they can actually target people that have looked at the website so it's effect an effective form of um <clears throat> remarketing so you might, might start seeing these ads and you can take inspiration from these guys as well so yeah that is what a meta advert is made up of. So what do you need to launch a meta advert? Well, firstly, you'll need a Facebook page. Um, unless your page is, uh, your personal page, I should say, is one that's been set up to public. If your, page, if your personal page has been set up to public, then what that means is you will be able to um, uh, run an ad from your page, if that makes sense. You don't need the blue tick. Um, I had a few people uh, reach out to me recently asking if they needed the blue tick, which is £10.99 a month. 
you don't need the blue tick in order to run an advert on your page you just need to have your page set to public so you, but but again i would probably recommend um you know unless you are unless your business is you which actually we have joe here and obviously your business joelines.co.uk is of course you then it may be worth running it from your personal page but again that's a conversation i can have with you but I would probably recommend, unless you want everybody having access to every aspect of your of your social media presence uh, on Meta, so Facebook and Instagram, probably would avoid it. But you do need uh, some form of Facebook page, whether that's personal or business. You'll also need a Meta ad account. So this is where Meta will take the money from your account, take the money straight from your um, your personal account. Now the way that this works, and people always get a little bit um, a bit worried, but um, effectively Facebook works in arrears so Facebook will run an ad for you uh, so we have a client uh, well, we have several clients actually uh, where they get billed every 700 pounds that they spend so for every 700 pounds they spend and they spend that over the course of like a day and a half maybe sometimes two days where that 700 pound limit is hit it just takes the money straight from their account now if you're looking and I you know look at the people that are here today um, and if you're, if you're watching this on YouTube you more than likely probably have a smaller business and you're not looking at you know jump certainly wouldn't recommend jumping straight in at you know a couple hundred pounds a day you want to be looking at uh, something that's kind of within your marketing budget and something that's a bit lower but what it will do to begin with if you've never run an ad is it will take the payments out in smaller increments now it's a little bit different for everybody but what it tends to be is the first payment that comes out is once you spend seven pounds so if you're spending five pounds a day for example then normally after day one uh, day one a if you will um then um your your um uh, so I say day one A. I don't know why I said day one A. You, basically, after day two, partway through day two, you'll probably get charged, and it will continue to charge you uh, seven pounds, seven pounds, seven pounds as you're spending it. So effectively, you owe Facebook or Meta money until you've cleared it, um, and then it jumps up in bigger increments. So it will jump from seven pounds to about nineteen pounds, then it jumps up to about. 40 pounds like i don't know the exact uh, amounts but again we have some clients that go oh you know i've just had you know 100 pounds taken out of my account and it's like well, we haven't been charged for x amount of days before and what it's doing is it's kind of hit that buffer and it's taking that money very simple to set up uh you just need to go to www.business.facebook.com you need to go to your billing settings within that account uh, within your your um, business manager account and just set up an ad account link the ad account to your Facebook page and you're away again we're going to be doing this uh, once the recording has finished as well you'll also need uh, a pixel or a data set so I mentioned this earlier this is a piece of code that will go on your website it doesn't matter if you've got a WordPress website or Squarespace or um, you know um, GoDaddy or whatever they will all have a, a place where you can insert code from Facebook on your website now it, for years it was known as a pixel so you'd have a Facebook pixel on your website uh, but now they call it data set um, and and the the the, um, the the product itself has actually been adjusted a little bit and it's been adjusted for for in my opinion a good reason um, it's going to be a lot easier for um, newbies, if you will, um, to uh, to be able to access it and be able to upload it to their website. Um, and then also you'll be able to, it's easy to analyze the results, etc. as well. But you only need one of those. You need it on your website, usually on your homepage, uh, and then it will spread throughout the rest of your website. And then finally, this is a really obvious one, but you need a product or a service that sells. Um, you, you, you'll if you've if none of your competitors are selling on on Facebook, there may be a reason behind it. Um, it may be that that they have tested it, they've tried it, and it didn't work. Um, I hope that's not the case. Um, I would hope that's not the case for any of you. And what I would hope is that perhaps they haven't had the um, the knowledge to be able to do it um you know for for, for you know, the better adverts that we launch for our clients uh, through kona media um they work 
Um, and whether that's a product, whether that's a, a service or a solution, it should work. But if you're struggling to sell your product or your service, you know, when you have a face to face meeting, it, you know, if you're um, th this is this 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 is more i'll be honest there's more pointed there's more based at people who um are struggling to make sales right now without doing this if that's if you're struggling to make sales right now then this may not work for you it just might not work but again we'll touch upon that a little bit more uh, after the recording um so uh, I just wanted to touch upon the pixel or the data set. There's five simple steps to setting up the, the pixel or the data set. First of all, and again, we will, we will touch upon this, uh, within the business manager itself, you need to create a pixel or a data set. Again, it's just a simple case of clicking create. That that's as, as easy as it is. It's just knowing where to find it can be the problem. Um, you need to add that pixel or that data set to your website. So again, Facebook makes it, uh, and Meta make it very, very simple. There is either a way where you can manually set it up. And when you manually set it up, it will give you the code. You need to copy the code. You need to paste it on your website where it tells you to paste it. Alternatively, if you have a company that manage your website, like Creative Media, perhaps we manage your website, um, it, 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 um, it will give you an option to just email the pixel instructions to that person. You type in their email, you click send, and the pixel, the code, will go to that person. They make it very, very simple. Uh, number three, you need to test the pixel. So again, the amount of people I've spoken to and the amount of business owners that have come to us and said, hey, you know, everything's set up. We just need someone to launch the ads. We need someone to, to do the creatives, and then we need someone to manage it. And I get amazing, perfect. And we've run through this. Okay, so you've created the pixel, we've added the pixel. We're going to test the pixel. It's not working. Something has not been aligned. Um, or um, perhaps there's, there's been, uh, and again, we will touch upon this um, after the um, uh, after the recording, um, but it, perhaps they haven't um, uh, correctly set up the buttons because you can actually uh, track what buttons people are, are clicking and what pages people are going to. So if somebody clicks purchase, then that can actually be sent back through to your uh, to your data set or your pixel, and you can see oof, a sales come through at this day on this time. Um, but obviously, if, if if it's unable to pick that up, then having the pixel on there is not really working um, because you obviously you want to be able to manage and understand that okay, I've been running this ad at ten pounds per day, and today we've made three sales off the back of it. But you can, you won't know that if that button hasn't been set up. Just as an example. Um, and, and also if you've got, um, uh, like a thank you page. So if you, you are selling products or you are selling, um, like a service, um, that people can buy on your website. Uh, and, and obviously I'm talking a lot about sales here. There are lots of different ways that you can, you can generate leads through your uh, website. So, you know, people would fill in a form, either like a native Facebook form, um, which would, which would, you could then using something like Zapier, which is a connectivity tool you can have those leads put into a, a spreadsheet or you can have them sent to monday.com like a crm or you could have them somewhere ever i'm very aware now i'm probably confusing you a little bit but the main point is just make sure you test the pixel make sure the pixel's working right and it is picking up traffic and it is understanding what's happening when people get to the website a few other things to consider so I wanted to touch upon this. Um, firstly, so again, and I've touched upon it there a little bit. Choose your campaign goal carefully. Now, your campaign goal, and I mentioned it earlier as well, could be you just want more visibility in the local area. Um, it could be you've got a coffee shop um, and you just want to let people know, hey, look, we're here. This is what we do. This is how we do it. Um, that obviously a, a brand awareness campaign. If you were looking to sell products on your website, a brand awareness campaign as part of a larger campaign, yeah, great. But if you're a small business, you have a very limited marketing budget, what you're probably looking for is you're looking for sales. So be careful when choosing your campaign goal, is what I would say. If you're looking to make sales, there is a, a sales campaign goal right at the very bottom. Choose sales goal. 
if you are uh, a, perhaps a B2B business like Kerner Media, um, you may want to generate, you may want to uh, launch um, a lead campaign goal. So you're not looking to track the sales on the website, but instead you're looking to collect data from people. And again, same goes with brand awareness. And, and there are a number of um, a number of other campaign goals there as well. But just make sure that you choose it carefully. It might be, again, I might be um, uh, jumping the gun. It could be that actually you are looking at putting something in longer term. So you could create, and I'm just giving you an example now, you could create a brand awareness campaign um, that uh, you are, you, you would then retarget later on with a sales campaign. So you have this brand awareness campaign and anyone that engages with that brand awareness campaign, you target it with this sales campaign over here. And then you're getting more bang for your buck here because you know the people over what you're hoping the people over here, because they've engaged with this post, that they're more likely to be customers. So you would just hope that makes sense. But yeah, choose your campaign goal carefully. Um, Ensure your creative looks fantastic. So whether you are creating uh, a video or images or a carousel, make sure it looks good. The amount of rubbish um, creatives I see on adverts is shocking. You know, it, it, think about it as being the uh, the shop front um, to your to your uh, to your shop if you had a shop or you, you know if you had a um, you know a, sh a shop on the street. Do you really want people to see something that's pixelated? Do you want people to um, look at something that, that looks like it was created in, you know, Microsoft Paint? You really, really don't. Um, if you're not creative, again, you know, one that, the one that um, a lot of our clients tend to use, Canva.com. Use Canva.com. It's got templates in there. You can create a template. You can just change a few bits around um, and you can do that. Alternatively, you know, we also have our own graphic designer here at Kona Media. If you want to use a graphic designer, give us a shout. We can happily put together some options for you. Um, but again, don't settle for second best. Don't settle for ah, that'll do because it's your money you're spending. And if you're spending five pounds, that's 35 quid a week that you're just flashing down the toilet. That creative just looks a bit rubbish. Don't want to swear. So, yeah, hopefully you know what I'm saying, though. Keep a close eye on the results. So the results of your advertising campaign could be you just want to increase website visitors. Could be that. Um, who, who am I to argue? You might be so, if your website is optimized for when people arrive there, that they go, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Like, okay, this is exactly what I was looking for. And you have that much confidence in it. You may just want to run a, 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 a web traffic campaign, a campaign just to drive as many people through to your website as you can. Um, alternatively, if you're looking to make sales, again, sales don't come quick. Um, they can come quick in some instances, but sales don't tend to come quick. What you're looking for is you're looking for the number of impressions that people are, um, the number of impressions that the advert's making. Um, and again, the results of what those people are doing when they get to your website. So the engagement, the advert, um, the, the, the sales, keep a really, really close eye on, on, on the, those results. And, and this ties in with the creative side. If you've had an ad running for two months and you've got a very small pocket of people that you're targeting, consider ad fatigue. Ad fatigue is where your ad has been seen by the same people but they stopped reacting to it. They stopped going, oh, this is fresh, this is interesting. That's when you need to be looking at a new creator, something a bit different. Um, and again, if you are running A-B tests or split tests, look at both results. Okay, um, you know, it's a very, very strange, um, strange one, but I, I will share it's a few years ago now, but there was um, a study that was done and it turned out that uh, what a white background did better than any other color and nobody understood why it was a white background did better than any other color um so whatever product you had you put it there on a white background it did better than people's brand colors it did better than black green red yellow orange whatever a white background worked so again just keep an eye on those results and make sure that 
if you have one ad that's doing really, really well and one ad that has been doing a bit rubbish, switch this ad up or stick a third ad in the middle. See what that one there, take the best parts of this one that you think, the, the, the worst parts, of, uh, the best parts of this one. See if you can create a super ad that can challenge this one. And what you're looking to do is you're just looking to decrease your cost per acquisition or your CPA or your cost per sale, or cost per lead, whatever you want to call it. You want to reduce that as much as you can. It's really obvious, but people get a bit lost. And sometimes in cases as well, clients we've worked with in the past, they get a bit complacent. So just don't do that. So to summarize, meta advertising is advantage for uh, is advantageous for a targeted audience reach brand exposure and engagement and by utilizing meta's robust advertising tools it does allow businesses to tailor campaigns optimize for specific goals and access detailed analytics for better marketing strategies that is it in a in a in a in a whole um i hope you found this uh this interesting and if you are watching this on youtube and you'd like to join the Kerno Club, where you'll get weekly training sessions such as this one, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording now, but thank you very much for joining me.